The most tragic money failures always have two elements. Unexpected events meet unequipped family. You can only control one, and though it seems like an impossible mountain for most of us, I've got three steps here that we've taken to grow our emergency fund and be ready for anything that life throws at us. But first, go ahead and hit subscribe and comment where your favorite place to vacation is. Only 43% of people would pay for an emergency expense of $1,000 or more from their savings. So that means that most people, if they had an unexpected expense of $1,000, would have to use a credit card or some kind of debt. Credit card dependency is at a record high. 25% of people would accrue credit card debt to pay for an emergency expense and then have to pay it off over time. This is a record percentage since the poll was started about 10 years ago. That means that if they had an unexpected expense come up, it's likely that they would be going on a credit card with rates of 20 to 25% or more. And that can be a hole that it would take forever or Feel like it would take forever to dig out of. Here are three levels to keep you out of that debt hole and steer clear of the debt cycle. Level one, building an emergency fund, save a thousand dollars. This is super common. You can talk to so many different financial gurus and Dave Ramsey, but what can you do with a thousand dollars? If I get laid off, and that's not gonna scratch the surface, but here's the deal. A thousand dollars is easy to remember thousand dollars is doable for the vast majority of Americans. Most importantly, it's a starting point keeping you in the top 75% of households and not needing to use a credit card to pay for that surprise bill that comes up. Once you have a thousand dollars saved up, you're ready to level up and measure your savings based on actual spending. That takes us to level two, emergency fund with three months of expenses. So once again, if you got $1,000 saved up, then the next stage is measuring your emergency savings based on what you actually spend month to month. The problem is when your spending unexpectedly shifts. <coughs> Inflation. 74% say economic factors are causing them to save less right now. That includes 68% of people who say inflation is to blame. That's up from 49% just last year. And now 44% of people say changes in income and employment are the number one thing holding them back. So it's either economic factors, inflation, or it's just basically getting laid off. It is the main reasons why people are being held back from being able to save. Having three months of expenses saved up provides enough cushion for most people to find a new job if they're laid off. That's the biggest reason why people end up in this situation in the first place. So once you've got your $1,000 saved up and then you've got three months of expenses, it's time for level three. And that's emergency fund with six months of expenses saved up and ready to go. I usually only recommend this for people with a variable income such as myself, or at least I used to. One month to the next, commission caused our household income to rise and fall. That's because I'm in sales and it's something that it changes my income depending on the seasons. It's sometimes in unexpected ways, but if there's a dry spell or if you get laid off, it's important to have enough cushion to be able to transition smoothly if you find that the income's not there the next month. Consumer concerns are high. 68% of people are worried that they wouldn't be able to cover their living expenses for just one month if they lost their primary source of income. Now, let me say that again. 68% of people are worried that they wouldn't be able to survive one month. And that's including 85% of people in Gen Z. And that's the most concerned of any generation of any time. It's an epidemic for younger people on whether or not they're going to be able to afford living paycheck to paycheck and with no emergency cushion. And the answer is yes. Cash loses its value every month to inflation. And that's the number one thing that I hear back on any time anyone has any level of bank account. They say, well, what, you know, that money is just losing its value. But you have to ask yourself. If you lose your job in a recession and you rely on debt to make up the difference, how much farther is that going to set you back? 
To round things out, here are my three frequently asked questions on emergency funds. Where do I keep the emergency fund? This depends on what's going on in our lives. If we're about to have a kid, we stockpile cash in our checking and savings accounts and it's ready to go. It's early access and it's peace of mind. When we're coasting, we may keep three months of expenses in checking and high yield savings and then three months of expenses in a low cost, very stable ETF and mutual fund. Question number two. How do I decide which expenses to include in the emergency fund? This is why we budget and start with two categories, essentials and discretionary. For us, groceries are essential, restaurants are discretionary, daycare is essential, vacation is discretionary. You have to do some soul searching and decide as a family what to include. Sit down as a couple at the table and write it out. And number three, do we need an emergency fund if we have investments? This is super common these days. Layoffs are up and the stock market is down. There are countless people who have lost their jobs and are now having to sell their stocks at the bottom of the market to cover basic expenses. This is a lose-lose situation that could have been avoided and is why the path to winning with money starts with an emergency fund.